Right, you lot, here we go again. Northern Chipmunk here with uh, AS Communication and Culture. Lesson two this time, introduction to codes. Ooh. Right, so what is a code? Well, a code can be understood as a system of communication which needs to be learned and interpreted in order to be understood. For example, speaking English, our times table, wearing the correct outfit to a particular function or venue. To understand the code, we need to be familiar with the combination of signs it uses, such as letters, numbers, clothing items. The rules required to arrange these signs into a meaningful order. For example, spelling, multiplication, fashion style, as well as share some background knowledge with others so we are able to regard the code as valuable and use it effectively such as increasing our vocabulary, learning our seven times table, gaining access to a class in iClub. Further examples of such cultural codes which are common in the UK include our national insurance number, our college student number, our mobile phone pin number, our bank account number, our passport etc. Clearly, learning and understanding such codes through socialisation and enculturation is essential if we are to operate in modern society effectively. Language is a cultural code. Mm. The English language is a code which can be both written and spoken in order to communicate with others. It is important to remember though that how, when, where and with whom we communicate are all just as important as what we communicate. For example, the meaning of what we say will change if we use a sarcastic tone of voice. How? If we're grumpy in the morning. When? If we're in the middle of the supermarket. Where? If we're chatting with our friends or our grandparents. With whom? Thus, effective communication relies upon an awareness of form, content and context. That is, specifically, we should always bear in mind physical environments. If we're speaking, is it inside, outside, noisy, quiet, formal, informal, public, private? Relationships. Is who we're speaking with familiar or unfamiliar to us? A friend or an enemy? Older or younger? Cultural occasion. Are we speaking on a night out? At a wedding? At a funeral? At the doctors? Cultural differences and similarities. Are we speaking to someone of the opposite sex? From a non-English speaking country who is the same ethnicity or who belongs to the same subculture, etc. Variations of language codes. Deep man. By having knowledge and experience of the English language code, we are, in turn, able to vary the ways we use it in order to suit our needs or the needs of a particular situation. For example, we will use standard English when we are in a formal situation, like a job interview, and employ words like, good afternoon, you're welcome, indeed. We will use slang when we're in an informal situation, like hanging out with friends and use words such as yo, safe, dotty. And when online, we will use abbreviated text phrases like lol, boob, <laughs> lol, brb and cba. Language styles. How we speak is just as important as what we say because among other things, this communicates ideas about our social and cultural worth, power and identity. Our accent and dialect can connote in the minds of listeners stereotyped expectations of ignorance, poverty, rudeness, criminality and inferiority. For example, Mank is often judged as aggressive, scouse, He's regarded as scally, brummy, as slow-witted, cockney, as cheeky. However, the use of standard English together with received pronunciation alternatively connotes stereotypes of wealth, education, manners and authority. 
and is often associated with politicians, judges, members of the royal family, news readers, etc. Register. Register refers to the types of words and vocabulary used in different circumstances and with different people. Low level register is our use of simple and common words like hello, thanks, see ya, whereas high level register refers to our use of complex and specialised words like ideology, socialisation, context, etc. If these complex words are too difficult to understand or are used too often, then this risks turning language into jargon, which could then be considered to be pretentious or misleading, i.e. using big words just to sound clever. Politicians, <laughs> salespeople, academics, religious leaders are frequently accused of needlessly using jargon when simple words will do. Language change. We should remember that we frequently alter, adapt or change our use of language codes according to certain circumstances. That is, if we completely change the way we speak in a certain situation to be understood better by someone, this is called code switching. For example, when we answer the telephone and put on a posh voice to impress whoever is on the other end of the line, i.e. use standard English with received pronunciation instead of slang. When we alter our speech, however, for example, when we tone down or ramp up our swearing when we meet a new friend of a friend, this is called style shifting. This helps us create and communicate an impression of ourselves. This said, when we wish to communicate respect, warmth and or friendliness across to someone, we tend to mimic or copy their speech patterns and the words they use, for example, with our best friend or someone we like. This moving together of voices is called convergence. When we wish to communicate disrespect, coldness and or a distance however, we tend to ignore their speech patterns and words and insist on using our own, for example, against a stranger or someone we distrust. This moving apart of voices is called divergence. Nonverbal communication. Another code which is essential to human communication is body language or non-verbal communication. For example, hand gestures, facial expression, the way we stand. It can seem natural, but it isn't. It's learned through socialisation and enculturation and, like spoken or written language, also relies upon cultural signs, rules and knowledge. Forms of non-verbal communication. NVC takes many different forms and how it's interpreted depends a lot on the time, place and participants involved. For example, the thumbs up gesture is a common way of agreeing in the UK but in Iran it is considered offensive. In Japan, people bow to greet each other and show respect. In South America, it's considered normal for strangers to casually touch each other when in conversation. In New Zealand, Maoris greet each other by rubbing noses and breathing life into each other. Aww. And in Bulgaria, people shake their head to mean yes and nod to mean no. NBC, paralanguage. Paralanguage refers to the sounds we make which are not words that still mean something. For example, tone of voice can reveal a lot about our mood or reaction to something. As also can laughing, sighing. Yawning and even silence. For example, if we hear someone whisper, we think they're telling a secret. If they shout, we believe they're angry. If they stutter, stutter, stutter we feel they're nervous. And if someone stays silent, we think they've fallen out with us. NVC, physical appearance. Physical appearance, the way we look or how we've modified ourselves to look, can reveal and communicate a lot about our identity, self-presentation and self-worth. For example, our clothing, footwear, hairstyle, makeup, body shape, accessories, piercing, tattoos, fake tan. Eh, thus, if someone wears their pyjamas to the supermarket, we think they're lazy. If they wear crocs, we think they're uncool. 
If they have a skinhead, we consider them to be antisocial. If they wear a Pandora bracelet, they are thought of as wealthy. If someone is too thin, we assume they have low self-esteem. If they have extensive piercing and tattoos, we consider them to be rebellious. NBC Kinesics Kinesics refers to the movement of all or parts of our body in relation to other people, objects or spaces. For example, hand gestures, facial expression, nodding, our posture, etc. Thus, if someone weighs at us from across the road, we think they're trying to get our attention. If they frown, then we believe they're disappointed with us. If they slouch in their chair, we feel they have bad manners. And if they fall over in a bar, we assume they're drunk. Specifically, there are three types of kinesics. Emblems refer to gestures which are a direct substitute for words. For example, a thumbs up means yes. A tapping of a wristwatch means what time to call this. Illustrators refer to gestures which reinforce the words we use. For example, pointing at someone and saying, there she is. Hugging a friend and saying, I've missed you. Kissing a boyfriend or girlfriend. And saying, I love you. Adapters refer to gestures which unconsciously express a person's mood or state of mind. For example, drumming our fingers means we're bored, a bit like you are now. Scratching our heads means we're confused. NVC, proxemics. Proxemics refers to the positioning of our body in relation to other people, objects or spaces. For example, sitting, standing, queuing up, our personal space or territory. Thus, if someone sits in our seat in a classroom, we feel they're being disrespectful. If someone jumps the queue we're in, we think they're being rude. And if a stranger stands too close to us, we believe they're being well creepy. NVC, haptics. Haptics refers to the physical contact we have with other people, objects, or ourselves, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, in order to express the unspoken. For example, we kiss somebody we're fond of, we stroke a pet for comfort, we hug somebody to make them feel better, we pinch somebody if they're annoying us. It's interesting that we also hold on to inanimate things in our lives which we feel matter to us, and in order to express ownership over them. That is, through physical contact, the object is no longer just a thing, but something that feels like it's ours over time. For example, a mobile phone, a pen, a purse, a pebble we may pick up on a beach and hold on to. NVC, Oculesics. Big word. Oculesics refers to how we use our eyes, where we look, when we look, how we look, and for how long. For example, we stare at something that interests us, we spy on something we envy, we glare at someone we don't like, we squint when we're unsure of something, we look away when we feel guilty, ashamed or when we're lying and our pupils dilate, grow larger when we're attracted to someone. NVC, olfactics. Olfactics refers to how we use our sense of smell what we smell, when we smell, and uh, who we smell. For example, we'll sniff a flower because we enjoy its perfume. We'll sneeze when we have a cold. We'll snort at someone when they leave us unimpressed. It's significant to note the intimate relationship between smell and memory also, in that certain smells or aromas can immediately transport us into the past. For example, such as Tipex, Fruit erasers, freshly baked bread. NVC, nonverbal leakage. Nonverbal leakage refers to those aspects of NVC which we have little control over but reveal a lot about our mood and or state of mind. For example, we shiver when we're cold, we sweat when we're hot, we blush when we're embarrassed, we cry when we're upset, we wretch when we're disgusted. In UK culture, it's generally regarded as disciplined and civilised if we're able to be aware and control our non-verbal leakage, however, i.e. keep a stiff upper lip. NVC in 
important points. The meaning of NVC varies from country to country, from culture to culture, and between different social groups and subcultures. For example, when someone forms a circle with their thumb and forefinger, this means OK in the UK and USA, but in Japan it means money, and in Brazil it means asshole. In turn, much NVC is gender specific. For instance, males tend to relate to each other through oculastics, looking, while females tend to relate through haptics, touching. We should also remember that aspects of NVC very rarely happen in isolation, but instead combine together to form an unspoken statement. For example, grumbling, power language, and frowning, facial expression, with your arms folded, kinetics and haptics, at the same time, communicates displeasure and defensiveness. Finally, we should note that we can use NVC to contradict what we're saying verbally to create a different impression in the minds of those we are with. For example, when being sarcastic, our words may say something supportive, but our tone and body language reveals something critical. Right, you lazy thieves of the internet, this has been Northern Chipmunk with another upload. Uh, I do genuinely hope you've learned something, but you probably haven't. Anyway, subscribe! <laughs>